Yes, okay. awesome. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we're ready to get started. So I wanted to introduce our speaker for this session. Her name is Bella Nira Jimenez. She is working with the American Heart Association, and she's joining us today to talk about hands-only CPR, which is an, a really important skill. Some of us, I know, have trained and practiced before, so this is going to be a little refresher. And uh, they may be able to come and visit us again in the future to do um, a, a more comprehensive training. So I will go ahead and hand it off to Bella Nira. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Bayanita Jimenez from the American Heart Association. And as Jordan was saying, today I'll be teaching you about hands-only CPR and how to keep the beat um, till the medical response team arrives. So before we get to talk about hands-only CPR, let's cover what CPR is. So CPR is an acronym that stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It's an action of trying to revive someone that's not breathing by performing chest compressions, which will then act as an external heart almost. So this external heart is just like our internal heart. It's helping to pump blood to the individual's vital organs, um, such as the brain. Many people have become familiarized with the term CPR at some point in their life, um, though often it's confused with having to include mouth-to-mouth -mouth breaths to be effective. Hands-only CPR, however, um, what many individuals don't know is that this is shown to be just as effective and conventional as regular CPR in the first few minutes of an out-of-hospital um, sudden cardiac arrest. So, Hands-only CPR is a simple two-step method, doesn't require any mouth-to-mouth -mouth breaths. So step one is to call 911, and step two is to push hard and fast in the center of the chest, typically between 100 and 120 beats per minute. So if you know that song, Staying Alive by the Bee Gees, that's always a great reference. Um, I'll be demonstrating hands-only CPR at the end of this presentation. And if you have any questions throughout this, um, PowerPoint presentation, go ahead and save them because I'll be asking for questions at the end. Um, if you want to practice on your own to prepare yourself to act in an emergency, the American Heart Association website, heart.org, provides hands-only CPR instructional videos as well. A research showed that people who view a CPR instructional video are much more likely to attempt life-saving resuscitation. So hands-only CPR can save the life of a teenager or adult who suddenly collapses at home, work, or even in the park. Hands-only CPR is not for use with infants and young children. Uh, when it comes to infants and small children, as well as victims of drowning and electrocution, traditional CPR um, must be used. A lot of people ask why you can't use this on children and infants, and we typically like to tell them that at their age, everything should be working. So in the event that they collapse or go into cardiac arrest, it's their lack of oxygen is completely cut off and they do need that mouth-to-mouth -mouth breath. And um, when it, when in the, like outside of the community and the hospital, I mean, outside of the hospital, when somebody goes into cardiac arrest, it's very important to start compressions right away. Um, as soon as these compressions are done, you can really make a difference. So I set, mentioned cardiac arrest in the previous slide, and a lot of people don't know what cardiac arrest is. So cardiac arrest is an electrical malfunction in the heart. It causes a regular heartbeat and the heart to suddenly stop beating. It disrupts the flow of blood to the brain, lungs, and other organs. About 70% of cardiac arrest um, occur outside of the hospital. Cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death. And according to the American Heart Association, about 90% of people who suffer out of hospital cardiac arrest die. Um, however, CPR, especially if performed immediately, can double or even triple a cardiac arrest's victim of chances of survival. So, and only about 46% of people who experience an out of hospital cardiac arrest actually receive the help that they need. So Take what you learn from this presentation and really don't be afraid to help because a lot of people don't get the help they need when they have a cardiac arrest out of the hospital. Now that we know what a cardiac arrest is, 
It's important to know that it's not the same as a heart attack. A lot of people get these two um, terms intertwined and mixed up, but think of cardiac duress as an electrical problem in your body when the heart malfunctions and stops beating unexpectedly. And think of a heart attack as a circulation or almost plumbing problem. So when the blood flow is blocked, the blood flow to the heart. And the biggest difference between the two is that cardiac arrest is when a person becomes unresponsive, is not breathing, or is only gasping for air. And a heart attack, um, it may be immediate and include intense discomfort in the chest or other areas of the upper body, such as the jaw and neck in women. And as well as, you know, shortness of breath, cold sweats, nausea, vomiting, and the heart usually doesn't stop beating. So the person is still responsive. And although not always, the two may be linked in the event that a heart attack leads to a cardiac arrest. So cardiac arrest can happen to anyone at any time. You never know who you might need to save or you never know who can save you. So one in 10 people who suffer cardiac arrest out of the hospital survive, which is very, very low. Um, most times it's because someone does not receive the help they need. Only 30% of American adults are prepared to act in this case. And hands-only CPR doesn't require a certification. So prepare yourselves, ask questions, and share the knowledge you've learned today. I know that um, hands-only CPR is something that needs to be implemented at every high school, or not high school, but every grade school, um, a student must take hands-only CPR before graduation. So um, as with any emergency, the first step in hands-only CPR is to call 911. As a bystander, don't be afraid. If you see an un unresponsive adult who is not breathing or not breathing normally, call 911 and begin to push hard and fast on the center of the chest. Continue pushing hard and fast in the center of the chest until help arrives. If the victim speaks, moves, breathes normally while you're giving chest compressions, then you can stop. If not, um, try to keep going until medical help arrives. And if you feel, if there's no one there to switch off with, if you get tired, um, try not to stop for longer than five to 10 seconds. Um, when you call 911, uh, make sure to stay on the phone until the dispatcher provides further instruction. You don't wanna hang up on them before they get all the information they need. Aside from explaining your emergency, it's very important to know your location. They will ask, um, and it's your job to be as specific as you, as you can possibly be. And don't panic or feel rushed. Answering the dispatcher's questions won't delay the arrival time of the medical response team. Um, sometimes people have very confusing homes. So if a cardiac arrest happens at the home and you forget to tell them, you know, you're gonna enter, take a right, take a left, go all the way down the hall, it's a third room. And they don't know that they're gonna spend all that time looking for you when they could know exactly where to go when they arrive. Um, many people ask, what if I do CPR wrong? You can't. Without CPR, the person will not survive. So you're the best chance of survival they have if any actions need to be taken. Another common question is, will helping lead to trouble? The answer is no. Too often people are afraid to act because they're afraid of getting sued for trying to help someone else. In the state of Texas, you're protected by the Good Samaritan Law, which states that a person is not liable for civil damages if you're rendering aid. I won't lie, it's very common to break a rib or other bone while attempting to perform CPR. But remember, you can always fix a broken bone and you can't really give someone their life back. Can you make things worse? Of course not. A person whose heart is stopped must have CPR to survive, and your willingness to help by administering can only help them. Any questions? We do have a couple of questions for the, from the audience. Feel free to submit a couple more right now, and then Bella Nier is gonna do a demonstration. But our first question is, do you get certified for hands-on CPR like you do for classic CPR? 
No, so as I mentioned earlier, hands-only CPR is not a certification. Um, it is taught to all students before they graduate high school at some point in their, in their early childhood education. So you can go home, um, look on the American Heart Association website at further videos for demonstration. You can practice with your family, teach your friends. This isn't something um, you need a certification for. That's only for mouth-to-mouth -mouth breaths as well. So this is just something we want to inform the public about and let them know that they can do this without having a certification and they shouldn't be afraid to attempt. Very good. Thank you. Um, our next question is asking, can older children learn and practice hands-only CPR? Yes, even young children can learn. It's harder for them because it is chest compressions and it's not easy. We have like a minute challenge that we do and it's it's like a workout. But anybody can learn it. It's just limitations on who can receive it, which would be not infants, not young children, and not victims of electrocution or drowning. Okay, very good answers, thank you. Um, any final questions, feel free to submit in the answer box if we have time at the end, but I think uh, Belanir will take it away with her demonstration. Okay, can you see me? We can s uh oh Okay, so right here I have my Annie mannequin. And as we said earlier, after you call 911, you've checked for breaths. You've checked for any rising in the chest. Annie is not responsive. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to take your dominant hand and place it in the center of the chest, so right along the nipple line. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's a, a plate right here. So that sternum you have, it's about two inches above it right here. Of course, somebody's not gonna have a push me here button when they go into cardiac arrest and they're not gonna click like our girl Annie, but you wanna get a two inch depth. So you wanna get that click sound on our mannequin, of course. Oh. To the beat of staying alive at about 100 and 120 beats per minute. So again, you're gonna take this part of your hand, place it right in the center of your chest, interlock the fingers, until help arrives and that's all it is two steps so just hard and fast in the center of the chest and be sure to call 911 is there any questions that was awesome i especially love the music <laughs> So any final questions for Bella Nira? We will be hopefully seeing her and maybe some of her other teammates in the future from American Heart Association to do a um, more full training on, on CPR. Any last questions before we? I'd actually like to add as well. Um, I know that this mannequin's on the table for the sake of the video, but in any case that you do have to perform cardiac um, arrest chest compressions, you want to make sure the victim is on a flat surface on the floor, um, away from any anything that can harm them. So just make sure they're on a flat surface on the floor. If it happens in a home and they're on the bed, again, you want to put them on the floor because you can't do compressions on a bed. They won't. It won't compress because of the the cushion on the bed. So make sure the victim is always on a flat surface on the floor, away from any harmful objects that may cause harm to them rather than help them. Good to know. Thank you. And it looks like we are out of questions too. All right. Any final words you'd like to say before we close the session? That's it. Thank you guys for learning. I hope you share this with your families. Again, anybody can learn this and it's very easy. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us. And we will share and the American Heart Association's uh, contact information and website in the follow-up email with everybody as well. 
Okay, thank you.